Hello, this is Miss Bert. Uh, it's pajama day, which is why I am wearing pajamas. Um, today I am going to be reading chapter six from Stone Fox, and chapter six is actually called Stone Fox. So I have a feeling we're going to be introduced to a new character today. Little Willie went to see Mayor Smiley at the City Hall building in town to sign up for the race. The mayor's office was large and smelled like hair tonic. The mayor sat in, the, in a bright red chair with his feet on his desk. There was nothing on the desk except the mayor's feet. We have a race for you youngsters one hour before. Mayor Smiley moped, sweat, mopped sweat from his neck with a silk handkerchief. Although little Willie thought it was quite cool in the room. I want to enter the real race, Mr. Mayor. You must be funny, funny boy, the mayor laughed and blotted his neck. Anyway, there's an entrance fee. How much? Fifty dollars. Little Willie was stunned. That was a lot of money just to enter a race, but he was determined. He ran across the street to the bank. Don't be stupid, Mr. Foster told Little Willie. This is not a race for amateurs. Some of the best dog teams in the Northwest will be entering. I have searchlight. We go as fast as lightning. Really, Mr. Foster, we do. Mr. Foster shook his head. You don't stand a chance of winning. Yes, we do. Willie, the money in your savings account is for your college education. You know I can't give it to you. You have to. I do? It's my money. Little Willie left the bank with a sack of $10 gold pieces, five of them to be exact. He walked into the mayor's office and plopped the coins down on the mayor's desk. Me and Searchlight are going to win that $500, Mr. Mayor. You'll see. Everybody will see. Mayor Smiley counted the money, wiped his neck, and entered Little Willie in the race. Here's a picture of him counting the coins. You see them in his hand. When Little Willie stepped out of City Hall, he felt 10 feet tall. He looked up and down the snow-covered street. He was grinning from ear to ear. Searchlight walked over and stood in front of the sled, waiting to be hitched up. But Little Willie wasn't ready to go yet. He put his thumbs in his belt loops and let the sun warm his face. He felt great. In his pocket was a map Mayor Smiley had given him, showing the 10 miles the race covered. Down Main Street, right on North Road, Little Willie could hardly hold back the excitement. Five miles of the race he traveled every day, and he knew with his eyes closed. The last five miles were back into town along South Road which was mostly straight and flat. It's speed that would count here. And with the lead, he knew he could get in the first five miles. Little Willie was sure he could win. As Little Willie hitched searchlight to the sled, something down at the end of the street, some moving objects caught his eye. They were difficult to see because they were all white. There were five of them and they were beautiful. In fact, they were the most beautiful dogs Little Willie had ever seen. The dogs had their heads up proudly and strutted in unison. They pulled a large but lightly constructed sled. They also pulled a large but by no means lightly constructed man. Way down at the end of the street, the man looked normal, but as the sled got closer, the man got bigger and bigger. The man was an Indian, dressed in furs and leather and with moccasins that came all the way up to his knees. His skin was dark, his hair was dark, and he wore dark colored headbands. His eyes sparkled in the sunlight, but the rest of his face was hard as stone. The sled came to a stop right next to Little Willie. Here's the picture. So he's like much bigger than Little Willie. The boy's mouth hung open as he tilted his head back up to look at the man. Little Willie had never seen a giant before. Gosh, Little Willie gasped. The Indian looked at Little Willie's face. His face was solid granite, but his eyes were alive and cunning. Howdy, Little Willie blurted out, and he gave a nervous smile, but the Indian said nothing. His eyes shifted to Searchlight, who let out a soft moan but did not bark. The giant walked into, city, into the city hall building. Word that Stone Fox had entered the race spread throughout the town of Jackson within the hour and throughout the state of Wyoming within the day. Stories and legends about the awesome mountain man followed shortly. Little Willie heard many of them at Lester's general store. Was this time in Den was this the time in Denver? He snapped a man's back with two fingers, said Dusty the town drunk, but nobody believed him really. Little Willie 
learned that no white man had ever heard Stone Fox talk. Stone Fox refused to speak with white men because of the treatment his people had received. His tribe, the Shoshone, were peaceful seed gatherers. Had, they had been forced to leave Utah and settle on the reservation in Wyoming with the other tribe called the Arif, Arapaho. I'm probably saying that wrong, sorry. Stone Fox's dream was for his people to return to their homeland. Stone Fox was using the money he won from racing to simply buy the land back. He, already, he had already purchased four farms and over 200 acres. That Stone Fox was smart, all right. In the next week, Little Willie and Searchlight went over the 10-mile trek every day until they knew every inch by heart. Stone Fox hardly practiced at all. In fact, Little Willie only saw Stone Fox do the course once, and then he and he sure wasn't going very fast. The race was scheduled for Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Only nine sleds were entered. Mayor Smiley had hope for more contestants, but after Stone Fox had entered, well, you couldn't blame people for wanting to save their money. It was true Stone Fox had never lost a race, but Little Willie wasn't worried. He had made up his mind to win, and nothing was going to stop him, not even Stone Fox. All right. Chapter 7 is called The Meeting, and I will read that tomorrow. All right. Hope you all are well. Bye.